This product right here is Ubiquiti's latest product in their Cloud Gateway lineup, and it's called the Cloud Gateway Fiber. And it really packs a punch. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's start by unboxing it. And let's take a look at what comes inside. So this is a small form factor cloud gateway and we'll take a quick look at the specs of this in just a second. We have the power module that we've come to see in some of the compact cloud gateways and we have a ether lightning cable, ether lightning patch cable, but this is the premium one. So again, just like in another video, I've unboxed one of these and it was the premium cable inside. We have some rubber feet to put on there. So if you are keeping it on your desk, and inside here, we have a power supply. Now, depending on where you are, you'll get the relevant one. This is an EU one. Let's take a look at what makes this so special. This is slightly bigger than some of the newer gateways that have just been released, and I'll show you a quick comparison against them in just a moment. First thing is on the back, we have this where you can go and place your feet within here if you want. So we have a little template for that. And let's take a look at the specs. So we have four 2.5 gigabit ports, one which has PoE+. And then we have three 10 gig options right here. So we have two 10 gig WAN options, which is a 10 gig RJ45 and a 10 gig SFP plus. And then we also have a 10 gig SFP plus LAN connectivity. So you can go ahead and connect this to another switch or another device running at 10 gig. We have the 54 volt DC input right here. We have some fans to make sure all the cooling and the circulation is happening within. And the other good thing right here is we have an M2 SSD slot. So you can use this for Unify Protect. I will add that you can use this for all applications across the Unify OS stack. So if we open this up right here, this is the no storage version. So it doesn't come with the tray or any SSD drive within, but this is configurable up to two terabytes of storage, just like the Cloud Gateway Max. Before we go and get this powered up and get set up, let's take a look at some of the tech specs within this and see what it has within. So first things first is the price, which comes in at $279. It runs the full Unify OS stack, as I mentioned. So protect, talk, network, access, connect, it can run it all. In terms of the ports, we went over that, but I'll go through it one more time. So 10 gig SFP plus, 10 gig RJ45, and those are both WAN ports, one 10 gig LAN port, which is an SFP plus, and four 2.5 gigabit ports, which one of those is PoE plus. There's no Wi-Fi built into this, and it can do up to 50 plus devices in terms of management. So that's the Unify devices and can service up to 500 plus clients. The storage is an NVMe storage, which can be up to two terabytes and the throughput speed with IPS and IDS enabled can be up to five gigabits per second. In terms of the power within, it has a quad core ARM processor, which is an A73 at 2.2 gigahertz and it has three gig of RAM. For Unify Protect, if you are getting this set up, there are some Protect camera limits, which is 15 HD cameras, eight 2K cameras, and five 4K cameras. Let's get this powered up and get it adopted within the Unify app. So we'll get the power plugged in there. We can get the power in here and we should see this pop up with a bit of power in just a second. There you go, you see the U logo pop up there and that's now, and we'll leave that to boot. If you have an SFP plus connectivity coming in from your modem, great. Or if you have an ethernet connection and you wanna change this to an RJ45, you can use this device right here, which is an SFP plus to RJ45 and that will do 10 gig connectivity. So we can pop that back into the SFP plus port and that will change to an RJ45. Or what I'm gonna do at this point is just use port five, which is a WAN connectivity anyway, and I can plug that in right here. As we come to see on all the devices, the new device is found straight away because I'm right next to it. So we can go and click set up and it's really gonna be as simple as some of the other devices. It's gonna try and connect to my ISP, but I know, I think I've mentioned it in a few other videos, it requires a VLAN and I have a static IP. So we can go to the advanced settings, IP settings and get it all set up in here. Once you've entered into those details, it's gonna go now and apply those changes. So we'll leave that running. Once it's picked up your ISP, you can go and give it a name. We're gonna leave it as Cloud Gateway Fiber and it's, go and it's now gonna go and test my internet speed. So it's almost giving me 1800, 1900 megabits per second in terms of download, sometimes hitting 2000, so 1973. And then the upload is maxing out around about 1000 megabits per second, which sounds about right for my connection. So I have two gig down, one gig up. 
Now it's going to go check for any firmware updates and get it set up on unify.ui.com. So let's come back in just a moment and we'll have a look within the console. We're now in the Cloud Gateway Fiber and it's running the latest network version that we have on the Unify network. And it's nothing different that you would expect to see within here. So there doesn't seem to be any different settings or anything like the sort that would differ from other gateways. You have all your clients, devices and topology along here and within the settings, it's everything you expect to see. The Wi-Fi is grayed out at the moment because I don't have any APs plugged into here, but you can plug in an access point too. So I wanted to do a little bit of testing with the WAN, LAN and LAN to LAN just to see what sort of speeds we are getting. I'm expecting maximum throughput given this, is, given this is a single device. What I have next to me is my desktop, which is running at 10 gig, which you can see on the screen right here, 192.168.2.224. And if I show you this little device right here, if I show you this little device right here, I have the Mac Studio connected into the WAN connection behind me. And that is running open speed test. I've allowed a few ports through the firewall just to make sure I'm able to run some tests. So the address is 10.1.1.1.3 and I'll show you where that is right here. And if I go to internet, you'll see 10.1.1.2 is the gateway. So that's this right here, that's the internet connection. And 10.1.1.3 is the machine behind me. So it's running on the same network. So what I'm gonna do is run to open speed test. And one thing I'll show you just here, that I'll bring across, you can see that it's actually going to the gateway, so 192.168.2.1, so that's the gateway of the subnet I'm on, and then going to 10.1.1.3, so it's running straight there. And if I go and start the connection, you'll see we're getting eight, nine, and then we're, there we go, we're pushing to the 10 megabits per second in terms of download speed. And I expect to see the same with the upload speed with 10 gigabits per second. So going across the WAN to LAN, you can see that that's handling that perfectly fine. Now I've switched over and popped in the Mac Studio into the LAN connection, but they are on two different VLANs. And if we have a quick look here, you can see 192.168.2.224 and 192.168.1.102 is the Mac Studio. Again, both of them running at 10 gig. We go to the open speed test, 192.168.1.102, click start. And again, I don't expect anything less than 10 gigabits per second in terms of up and down as we are connected directly into the router itself. And there we go, there's the results, 9.7 down, 9.7 up. So you can definitely get 10 gig throughput with this. And if you use the two and a half gig, I have tested it on the two and a half gig, I've not shown it here, but you do get the full two and a half gig again across different VLANs. Now, as you start adding more switches to this, this might change a little bit in terms of the results, but on this router itself, you're getting good performance. This is just a basic initial test to show you some of the speeds that you can get. I'll probably do a bit more in-depth testing with this to see what I can and can't do and maybe bring you a second review. So if there's something specific you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below. Now for a compact gateway, $279 is what you get with this. Now the Dream Machine Pro would be the next step up, which is $379. And that again, still gives you the 10 gig slightly more devices and a thousand plus client support. However, the limitation comes with the Dream Machine Pro with 3.5 gigabits per second with IPS routing. And with this, you get five gigabits per second. So you're actually getting a slightly better speed out of this. And for the size of this unit in terms of this compared to the Dream Machine Pro, this is something definitely you can slip away and it really is a workhorse for your network setup. The fact that it can run all the Unify OS applications as well, like Network Protect Access is great. And you can attach a 2.5 or a 10 gig gigabit PoE switch. Like the 2.5 gigabit PoE flex that's come out, this would be a perfect addition with this and would give you 2.5 gigabit connectivity with PoE++. I really think this is definitely going to sell out really quickly and is a powerhouse for what it does. This small form factor device gives you the dream machine performance in this little form factor and it allows you to tuck it away without needing a big rack setup. For $279, you can run all the Unify OS stack, so network, protect, and you can add in some storage to it as well. Well, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of this unit. Would you add something like this in your setup or would you replace what you have with something like this for a smaller form factor? Or do you think it's just another option depending on what the client needs are at that point? For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.